Hello and welcome. In this first video from our Gauss basic series, we'll show you how to use the arithmetic operators, create variables, and use the print command to see your output. With just these three skills, we can do some basic data analysis. Let's get to it. Since we're going to be working with interactive commands, we'll start on the command page. We'll enter our commands in the program input output window. A few weeks ago, when I was at a conference, I got an Uber ride from a driver in a full-size pickup truck. It had the crew cab and it was plenty comfortable, but it made me wonder how much it cost him to drive that truck. Could he be making money? We're going to try to figure that out while we learn Gauss. Let's first compute how many miles he drives per year. To do that, we'll need to use the Gauss arithmetic operators, which you can see here. Most of them should look pretty familiar. Let's create a variable named miles per year, which equals three days per week times 60 miles per day, and we'll assume he drives 50 weeks per year. Next, let's compute the number of gallons of gas he will go through. Gas per year equals miles per year divided by 18, which is the miles per gallon rating for his truck. Fortunately for him, he lives in an area with low gas prices, so his total cost for fuel will be gas per year times $2.15. So far we've created three variables in the Gauss workspace, miles per year, gas per year, and gas cost per year. In Gauss, and programming in general, a variable is just a label given to some data that we want to store. This data could be numeric, text, or one of the more complicated data types, which we will discuss later. We can quickly view all of the variables in our Gauss workspace by heading over to the data page. The symbols window gives us a preview of all data in our Gauss workspace. You can double click on any of the variable names to open a data editor containing a view into the entire contents of the variable. However, that's not very helpful for us now, since all of our variables are scalars, or one-by-one -one matrices. Legal variable names in Gauss must start with either a letter or an underscore. Numbers can be used after the first letter of the variable. The most important best practices with variable naming are to make the names descriptive and to be consistent. Miles per year is a pretty good variable name. It's clear and not too long. I think it's definitely better than, say, MPY. At the time you write the code, MPY will probably make plenty of sense. But as your programs grow in complexity and the number of variables grows, that sea of variables like MPY, GPY, GCPY, etc. will not be as friendly as it was at first. You'll also remember less over time than you expect. Though, as we learn more about this Uber driver, it seems that we're likely to be using many variables that represent quantities per year. So we can probably change miles per year to miles PY. And if all of our per year variables end with PY, that should be sufficiently clear. Our next variable name, gas per year, is not as good as the first one. It's not necessarily clear if we're referring to volume in gallons, liters, etc., or if we mean cost per year. Something like gas gallons PY or gas volume PY would be better. So let's make some new variables. We'll do that in the program input output window right here on the data page. If your program input output window isn't open, you can open it by selecting View, Program Input Output from the main Gauss menu bar. Before we create our new variables, let's clear out our Gauss workspace using the new command. Now we'll add our new variables to the empty workspace. To save ourselves a few keystrokes, we'll use the command history. Pressing the up arrow key on the Gauss command line will cycle through your most recent commands. This makes it easy to rerun a recent command, or as we're doing here, to make minor edits to a previous command and run it. The command history window on the command page shows your command history. Let's finish up our last couple of assignments on the command page so that we can see our command history as we go along. Earlier we viewed the contents of our variables on the data page. 
The print statement is another way that we can view the results of our Gauss computations. We can enter print, space, and then the name of the variable like this, or just the variable name. When you don't use the print keyword, it's called an implicit print statement. Both methods behave identically. You can print the contents of multiple variables by passing a space separated list of variables to the print statement. Since, as we just mentioned, the print statement takes a space separated list of items to print, if we enter an expression like this, we're going to have a problem. Because you're telling the print statement to print the value of miles py, then print the value of the multiply operator, followed by the value of gas gallons py. The problem, of course, is that it doesn't make any sense to print the value of the multiply operator. So we need to tell Gauss to evaluate the expression first. We can do that by wrapping the expression in parentheses like this. Or, if your fingers are feeling lazy, you can skip the parentheses if you also omit the spaces. There, we see the output of our expression is 1,075. That's the number of dollars we estimate our Uber truck driver is spending per year on fuel. In the next video, we'll compute estimates for some more of his expenses while showing you how to create and run your first Gauss program. See you then.